Creative Katie, Karen Birchill here. Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Today I have an art journal page tutorial for you. It's entitled Dance, and here is a sneak peek of part of it, and here's the rest of the page. So today I am working in my Canson Mixed Media art journal book. It is 7 by 10, and I tape off the edges to keep a nice clean edge and to keep all the product from getting into the coils. It just helps be able to move it. I also only do one side of my page and that way if I choose to frame it up or, or do something with it, I, it's, there's nothing on the other side. So I'm starting off today with by collaging some old music papers on top. And I'm just ripping these out, getting rid of the straight edges, and gluing it down with matte gel medium. I prefer the gel over the liquid. If I want it to be thinner, if I'm gluing down tissue paper or napkin, I just thin it with water and it becomes a little bit more gentle. So this is my preferred adhesive on that. So that and any of the other products that I'm using specifically for this project, I will put links to Amazon for those products so you can go and see them. If you do shop through my links, thank you very much. Just know that while I check the prices and select items that are the best price and have no shipping, sometimes that changes over time. So do your own due diligence. So now I have some die cuts that I cut out with my Silhouette Cameo. And these were actually used as stencils in a kid's class. So I have about eight of them um, at the ready. And I just decided that I'm going to add some texture to my page by using die cuts. Now, if you don't have die cuts, you can use modeling paste through a similar type of stencil. So then I'm using some stamping and I have a variety of stamps here that I used to just add some interest to the background. Now it's looking very busy and some of this you're not going to see. So I'm picking warm colors. I've got yellow, magenta, deep violet, um, cadmium yellow, and I'm mixing them wet on the page and getting other tones of paint on there. This is just my sunset colors. These colors just really work well together. They have a lot of energy and it's just my very, very happy place. The yellow and the magenta kind of make an orangey color. The magenta and the deep violet make another deeper red color. So while I'm using three colors, I end up with a lot more colors. And I'm working it into the texture, and sometimes I'm wiping it a little bit to make sure that I still have the music stamp, that I can still see some of that music paper underneath. Now when I started this page, I had no idea other than I wanted to play with these three colors. I did not know where it was going. I didn't know what focal point I was going to use. And that's okay. So now I'm going to do some more, some stenciling. And I have this sheet music stencil. This is a six by six. And I'm just stenciling in these music notes. Now, because I didn't know where I was going with this page, I've done it using the horizontal Land, or the landscape view. In the end, I, I turn this the other way so my music notes aren't exactly going the right way. But they're just textural. This is the Retroverse stencil. It's one of my favorite stencils. Again, this is the 6x6 six six one. And I'm stenciling with white. Now, 
Now, the white is very, very stark on this page, and actually I wasn't uh, happy with it at the time. And thinking about that, I think I may have just added a little bit of yellow to it uh, or brown to make it more neutral. And in the end, I made it work. So I'm stenciling this in, and I get a little carried away, as you can see. So I have a lot going on. It's a very, very busy page. So I'm unsure what to do, but I know that gold is going to look really good with the colors, the warm colors that I've got going on here. So I'm grabbing this Stampenda stamp. This is one of my favorite stamps. It's dots. I use it so much. I actually cut it in half. So when I teach classes, two people can be use, using it and I'm stamping that in gold. Then with the gold paint I am also going to do some gold splatters on the page and I do that by using a fan brush I thin down the paint and then I just splatter with the fan brush. Now I'm going to admit something here I wasn't happy and I didn't know what next so I let it sit for about two weeks and then as I was working on another page I had one of these ballerinas it was a smaller one and I thought oh that looks really nice with the white retroverse stencil so I got out my silhouette cameo and I cut out some of these ballerinas a larger size and I cut out three because I thought you know I'm cutting I'm going through the process the rest can go into my stash that's the way I roll so and then I ended up going actually even bigger and I cut out the word dance now you see me putting color swatches on there I was just testing out what which color I wanted to do the girl in Part of me wanted to do black, but the page is very dark, and I just didn't think that that would show quite enough. And so as I did my little test, I thought, okay, I'm going to use the cadmium yellow. I believe it's medium. And I'm going to add a little bit of orange to this just to warm it up a little bit more. It just looked too stark when it's just one tone. And I try to avoid just using a single tone for anything. So there I am getting the orange paint out of the tube. I just cut it open and there's lots of it and I have these little cups that I just bought at the dollar store so when my tube is almost empty and I can't squeeze any more out I just put it in there and then I utilize it from there. Now that I had that retroverse there in the corner and it was right where the lettering was going to go and it wasn't giving me enough contrast so I just got out the colors and I'm painting over it pushing that retroverse back and then I do off camera I splatter and I stamp to basically redo what I covered up so now I'm using the float technique with the black acrylic paint and my angle brush and I'm just shading around this ballerina and I because I want her to pop off the page now using a focal point and making that focal point yellow is something that I don't typically do but if you don't try you don't learn and since this is an art journal page, not a canvas, it's paper. And that is the place to experiment. When I am doing in my art journal, that is my time to play and to give things a try. And I just find it's a little easier to shade it before I glue it down. And then I decide I'm going to splatter the colors that are in the background on top of this girl, just to make it 
more cohesive. I thought afterwards what a good thing to do would have been to take my music stamp and stamp the music notes on the whole ballerina. There's music notes, there's the music papers that I collage that you can still see, even though that's not picked up on the camera, and then I use the music sheet stencil as well. So while I didn't have an idea how it was all going to gel together, you know, if I was doing that over, I would put the music notes on the ballerina. I think that would look really nice. By the way, I am looking for a nice music stamp. If you have one, leave it, leave your suggestion in the comment section below. So I cut the word dance apart. It was more connected in the script font that I cut out with my silhouette cameo. And I cut it apart because I wanted to make the word dance dance a little bit more. I wanted a little bit more movement. I love how the retroverse behind the girl are like spotlights. She's on stage. So everything here just kind of came together. So don't be afraid if you get a background and you love it or you don't like it, either way, just let it sit. Sooner or later, you're going to find something that's going to work on it or the inspiration will come. But you can't really force it. So I'm gluing this down with gel medium. And I'm undecided whether I'm going to leave the lettering white as you see it now, and it goes, it totally goes because the retroverts are that bold white. So while I'm undecided, I'm going to shade around the perimeter of the page. This frames the page, it's something I do all the time. And usually I do it when I'm uncertain about the next move. So you, I just delay making a decision until I add more elements to the page. So when I do this, it darkens the page a little bit and it gives that contrast with the black around the edge. This page with the music paper underneath it and the die cuts, it's really textured. There's lots of interest and this would look really nice on a canvas. And you can take this and whatever colors you have in the background, whatever your favorite colors, you can do any color combo that you like. So now I'm using the float technique on the outside of the girl shading around it. And I really think this adds a lot to it. Really makes it blend with the page. Now, if you don't want to do the float technique, you can use the Stabilo All pencil and then activate it with water, watercolor pencil, or charcoal pencil. And since this is my art journal and I'm not going to varnish it, I'm not adding any wet media after this, that would be fine. If this was a canvas, I would absolutely do the float technique because I don't want to activate it when I varnish it. So I took off the tape along the edge, and as you can see, I've got a nice, clean edge there. So it is time to decide. I need to decide how, what color I'm going to do these. And I attempt to make them gold. That just didn't stand out at all. There wasn't enough. I didn't want more yellow to go with the girl, so I went with black. And before I added the black, I did go over part of it and added a little bit of yellow to the canvas just to make it stand out because it was really dark where the A is. And you can see that there's some yellow there now. So acrylic paint, you can always add layers to it and lighten something if it's too dark or, you know, depending on what comes next. 
So I'm using the gel medium and just gluing these letters down. And this would have been fine to leave the letters black like they are. And actually, I really like that. I was thinking it was a little dark, so you're going to see what I do. But it could have stayed that way because the word doesn't necessarily have to be as forward as the focal image. It could be pushed back. So that's a matter of personal choice. And there you get a good picture, a close-up of the splatters and how this page really looks. So I grab my Unibo Signo White gel pen and I you know it works so well the last time I had it out this one was not causing me grief so I was grabbing other ones and getting it to writing it on my fingers to get it to start working properly but eventually I do get it going and I get it all outlined in white and it pops and the reason the white works there is you have that contrast with the black and there's the white from the retroburst so I made those white retroburst that I thought at some point in time were too stark work with the rest of the page by introducing that white again so there are some close-ups please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment Share this video with your friends. And as always, thank you so much for joining me.